Welcome to another Arius Wave market update. Okay, so I just want to start this off with gold. Now, as you know, I've been talking about gold being the hedge in this particular coming crisis that we're going to have. Well, at least through the Arius Wave lens. Okay, and as you know, this has started to happen recently. We have been seeing a turn down in practically all markets. Um, except I believe gold will be the hedge and the reason is a long-term pattern. Now, I've gone this over the long-term pattern several times and I just want to highlight one thing and I, I totally understand people's skepticism when it comes to gold due to how it's reacted in the past with the GFC and even last year in March. However, I think that you should, you should be very careful when um, judging uh, what an asset will do based off the past. Um, I go based off the pattern itself and the clues that it's offering and the potential opportunity that we're seeing here. I do not believe gold will go down from here. I believe it will actually shoot higher, a lot higher, right? And that, that this correction since 2011 is over. And I'm seeing a lot of um, time related, um, you know, evidence as well, like the correction since 2011 has taken 10 years to complete. And then August, we started falling after the wave D up in August last year. And then it ended basically um, August this year with a truncated wave five for wave E. Um, and then, you know, if you go back through my videos, you'll understand uh what I've been saying, I'll link them below in related ideas. So yeah, just wanted to say that first, every chart should be looked at, you know, individually and based off its pattern. If you know how to do that, Arius Wave knows how to do that. And that's why I have been very confident in calling this one because this is basically putting Arius Wave to the test in a big way because over the last few days, week or whatever, I've been really trying to find something wrong with this uh, count and idea in general. However, I cannot, I literally cannot find anything wrong with this count. I believe it's rock solid. And as you know, we saw a bullish engulfing candle on the daily close um, and it never made a new low. Even though it went very close to the low, it never actually made a new low and it could have broken below it during last night's, uh, you know, NFPs and what, whatever other news events were going on. It shuffled a lot down there, but it actually resolved to the upside to close um, above the previous uh, close or, or the previous open of the previous candle, creating this uh, bu bullish engulfing pattern, right? And I, I think this is critical right now to understand and to go back through this count, right? So what this count means is that according to RES Wave, there, there, this cannot be anything else other than what I'm saying it is, according to RES Wave. Of course. So you could say it's my opinion or whatever, but I use a methodology, I don't just guess. Um, so this is what it's all, all about. We've got a one, two, and then a one, two, right? I've gone through this several times, this has not changed. Look how close we got to the lows there. Now, this is the count here. We have a 1, A, B, C, D, E. This large move down was a five-wave move. I did call it a, a turn around this area, but obviously it continued lower because wave two was short and sharp. Wave four was more drawn out of a pattern. Um, so I did basically put a line where wave four ended and then we saw uh, a weak five wave move at the lows there. So I was, I was pretty, I was pretty uh, confident at the lows even judging given that we were seeing this pattern right here where wave four ended, right? If you go down to the five minute chart, this is what I got to do to show you this. So you can see that wave five was subdividing into three waves per wave. So there's a three wave there, a three wave there, and a three wave there. 
So to me, what we had to do was break above that magenta line to confirm that, you know, this move is done. And it got so close to the low that I was like, well, that's, that's pretty close, but we haven't seen it break the low. So this is still valid. Now we, we closed above that confirmation area with this really messy pattern. Now I don't really go into detail in the small, really, really small degree because it's just a lot of noise. Um, but I mean, we, we had an opportunity here to really break down lower. However, we broke out of this trend line, a couple of trend lines there got broken. And then, like I said, we're, we're starting to move higher now. So to me, this obviously next week will be pretty important with the whole thing. But I will be tracking it as usual. This is just another update. As I said, I'm going to be updating when required. Um, and I believe that this is <clears throat> very interesting. Now, it's one of the only markets to have closed any markedly higher, I suppose, uh, compared to other markets. If we look back at the Dow Jones, right, uh, you remember when I called that top up there based on that pattern up the top there? right here well that differ definitely turned down lower and you know it definitely produced this idea that we're moving lower we're starting to descend down into this uh bear market right now i do think that we still need to see a break of this particular low here to confirm this but as you can see the move has gone sharper to the downside um, and also, you know, it's given back uh, any gains from that previous move, which is a completed. Uh, now, this is probably where it hasn't been updated in this particular case, not on this chart, but I have updated on the other chart. So this can't be a wave one, um, at least not in the general sense, as I've been talking about on the on the larger pattern right i've been talking about this particular long-term pattern coming to an end here right with the wave d okay so this is a part of a larger wave d so I, I i believe that this this length okay so not so much that i believe but it's it's actually the length of another move which started uh, at the Great Depression lows, it was a wave A, and then we saw an expanded D wave within a D wave, and the E wave was the end of that B wave, and then this was the final move up for wave C. So this is what I call a type 2 expanded zigzag. So this is the kind of thing that we're seeing here. Um, in my opinion, a very impulsive looking wave, but not quite what you'd think. Um, also, a bit of trend analysis can see that this is much weaker than the first move. Um, so, I mean, it's a little bit longer. Wave Cs can do that due to the mania. But, you know, there's a lot of other things going on at the same time, not just this. Now, I can touch, I suppose, on the on the 10-year bond yield. At this point in time, we're still just waiting for this thing to continue higher. I do believe that once we get lift off here, that we will see things really get pretty crazy after that. But we need to be patient to understand that we need to see a move above around 3.2 to um, really signify that we're getting, we, we've completed this uh, move down since 1981 in the bond yields, aka interest rates, and that we're going to see something resolve to the upside in what I would definitely believe is going to be a wave C, which is part of a, um, a larger correction going back to at least uh, 1100 AD. However, the move that he's completing now here is a move a zigzag that started in uh, the year 1440 AD. Um, and this being the C wave of a zigzag, very choppy indeed. Um, to me, this is uh, signaling um, a lot of upside pressure, which should basically start to come out soon. So we should see that happen. Um, Bitcoin, 
Now, I have mentioned to you uh, recently, based on the BLX chart, what I believe this pattern is. Uh, I'll go back to that now, just to, just to recap on this. All right, so I do believe at this point in time that this these moves up were basically uh, a weak five wave move where every wave subdivides into three waves. Okay, so if, if you do a bit of trend analysis, you can see that this thing's definitely getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Um, it's going to take obviously a really big move down to confirm this, but having gone through this a billion times then started to realize that wave one was a zigzag wave three was a zigzag wave five is a zigzag uh with the wave c being a bit longer than the wave a um so a bit of trend analysis as well obviously wave one was pretty sharp up um and then you got a strong wave a weak wave c in terms of trend you know, strength in terms of angles. Um, same again for wave five, pretty strong start there and then sort of got weaker and then also hit once again a couple of times. It's gone under the channel and retesting that underside of the channel. And to me, that's it's not going to it's not going to be able to go any further. In my opinion, just because you see numbers on a chart doesn't mean you're going to get that price. Um, it's, it's just, it, it's basically got a few things going against it, um, as well as just this thing follows the Dow Jones anyway. So if the Dow Jones goes down, this will go down too. I don't think it's any different than what you see on the, on, on some of the small coins that are pumping, dumping. This is basically a, a slow motion train wreck in my opinion, um, I've had bullish views before, um, but just really putting it all together now, it really seems like we're going to, we're just going to go down from here. And as you know, if we, if we go back to the current, what's going on at the moment, you can you can see quite clearly. And I and I have said it in my previous videos, just throwing it back out there again, um, that Bitcoin won't see another all time high. This is it. Okay. You have wave five of this C wave that's subdivided into th three waves for every move up. Wave three having been the largest zigzag and then wave five, the small zigzag that's very similar in length to wave one. And now we're seeing the downside continue here. So we're already down, you know, since the highs, we're already down over 20%. So, you know, I, I understand a lot of people's... Um, you know, going back and analyzing, thinking that something's going to go up forever. But I don't know. I suppose this is a mistake that he's made at, at you know, major major tops. Um, very hard to pick them. But I did call the Dow Jones. I did say this one would recently, basically while whilst it was in this area here, right, just in this range. Uh, and now we're just seeing continued downside. I do believe we're going to see that continue lower. Uh, once we break the lows at around 28,000, um, we're going to get a bit of confirmation there. Uh, whether or not this goes into making like a head and shoulders pattern that keeps bouncing around triple top maybe. I mean, anything is possible. I can't really tell you that sort of thing. But I think it will just be very interesting to see the whole thing unfold. Um, because it's pretty crazy stuff, but you never know. This thing might just go straight down. Okay. Now, as I've said before, the Dow Jones is probably going to fall b below the point of the GFC. Uh, so would Bitcoin do the same? I don't know. I really don't know. I can't answer that question, but we are expecting five ways down. So as you know, markets tend to move up slowly compared to when they fall. So if this thing turns into a really big move down, uh, it could get pretty crazy. And we do have a very clear evening star pattern here uh, with a larger bearish candle as a confirmation here. If you're looking at it from a candle perspective, right? This is, this is probably one of the best reversal signals I've seen on this chart, right? Uh, <clears throat> you could say that's a spinning top. 
not quite a doji to call it a evening star pattern, but for the sake of um, the wave analysis, I'm going to just call it an, e an evening star uh, reversal here. And the weekly, the, the weekly uh, candle confirmation candle is uh, basically a bearish engulfing pattern. So to me, it engulfs about three of the previous. So, I mean, once again, we're just going to have to wait and see, but it's not looking very good at the moment for anything, in my opinion. But like I said, it's an ongoing process to follow these markets, to continue to observe them. Also, using certain, you know, pieces of information as, you know, entry signals, like this particular signal here was given when I basically produced that last idea. You know, once you break a wave five, in this case, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's a three wave move, right? So once you break below that, I mean, it's already confirming. It's just going to hang around there a bit until it continues lower due to, I don't know, uh, you know, oversold conditions or whatever. But I mean, eventually things, when they start moving, they really start moving. And, and that doesn't really matter about the RSI because these moves can happen very fast. Um, but anyway, once again, we'll, we'll see how that goes. XLM, I mean, I've called it, I called it here already that this is, you know, the start of something bigger that's going to go down with the wave one. This move here being a wave one uh, that ended in June and then we have a complete Arius wave, you know, certified correction going on here we need to see a break of 25 cents in order to confirm this but i mean you can already see the head and shoulders pattern there to me this is already proving to be a nasty and it's going to probably get probably going to get a lot worse um so th these are the kinds of things i'm looking at i'm keeping tabs on i'm, I'm reporting back to you guys uh, more often, if possible, if necessary, especially if we really start to see these com these confirmation points being broken, we're really going to start to see that, uh, you know, produce the kind of clues that we need to just say, yeah, look, this is, uh, this is confirmed, you know, as going down, like, you know, like the move that's coming next will be sharper than this move here that happened in uh, May, which was basically you know, the beginning of the end, uh, now that now that I think about it, this thing should start to get sharper than, than that move, especially if it's a wave three. You might wonder where it's going. Well, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are wondering that too, but I don't know what's going to come, what's going to rise from the ashes later once this whole thing is done. I don't know. I don't know the answer to these questions. All, all I know is that eventually things will have to turn around, okay? I suppose by the time that happens, we're going to have this thing that's called a level playing field. So everything will have an opportunity to prove itself once again and basically start again from scratch. Whether you believe that or not, completely up to you. I'm just, you know, giving you my thoughts here. I do think that we are, you know, very close to seeing some pretty big moves happen. They're probably not too good and a lot of people don't like to hear this sort of thing. So, like I say, don't take my word for it. Learn the waves, use your own judgment, use your own analysis. But if ultimately this proves to be accurate, then obviously the Arius wave methodology will be definitely taken more be taken more seriously and you know you you will actually be able to use it as a tool to know what's going on um, especially when you piece all the puzzle you know puzzle pieces together you you'll get more of a sense of what it is that you're looking at really right so I suppose that's it for now it's it's pretty it's pretty dodgy what's going on but you know, to me, gold is the way. So, or you could buy bear shares, you know, things that short the market in, you know, which is, you know, it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you're not losing money. 
it's all good. So hopefully you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you on the next one.